Well, NASA and Lockheed Martin just unveiled a new supersonic plane capable of flying from New York to London in under four hours. That is faster than the speed of sound. It's called the Sun of Concord. The new jet is a nod to the original Concord aircraft, a supersonic airliner developed back in the 60s, but retired in 2003 after a fatal crash. But this new $247 million version comes with a major upgrade. The 100-foot jet generates a less disruptive sonic boom, which according to NASA will help, quote, help change the way we travel, bringing us closer together in much less time. All right, now let's bring in Leroy Chow, former NASA astronaut, International Space Station commander. Uh, Leroy, it's so great to see you. First of all, how significant is this reveal from NASA? Well, this is exciting because this is the first X-plane that is supersonic in a number of years, but not because it's going to go faster or higher than previous airplanes, research airplanes, but because it's going to be much quieter. As you mentioned, the Concorde uh, passenger airliner was developed in the 1960s. It was very much restricted because of how noisy it was, not only its engines, but also it was not allowed to go supersonic over land because the sonic booms would, you know, smash windows and just and cause other uh, property damage. And so this research airplane is being designed so that the shape allows it to not compress the sonic uh, or the, uh, the pressure waves as much. Uh, and it reduces that sonic boom. So it, it is a technology uh, research airplane could lead to some things that would create quieter SSTs or supersonic transports in the future. So pretty cool to, to see the unveiling and looking forward to the first flight later in the year. And I have to say, yeah, looking at these pictures, it really does look really cool. Do you think this will be cleared for commercial travel, though? Well, here's the issue. This is a technology development airplane, so they're looking at ways to reduce that sonic boom signature. You see that long tapered nose, you see the, the high aspect ratio. In other words, the little stubby wings, and the long fuselage, the smooth underbody, that's all being designed to help keep those waves from compressing and causing those sonic booms. So if you have to build your airplane in that shape, you're not gonna fit much more than a pilot and maybe <laughs> a couple other people in there, right? And so, uh, you know, it, it remains to be seen how practical it will be to use the lessons learned towards actually building a practical supersonic transport that can carry enough people to make it economically worthwhile. But it's, you know, it's work that needs to be done and it's it's exciting that it is being done. I mean, it, it certainly is exciting, you know, and you mentioned the practicality of it all. You know, realistically, would this be something that would actually be accessible only for the rich? I mean, is this something the average traveler would even be able to use if it is approved for commercial use? Well, that's a great question because even Concord, the average person, uh, you know, maybe you had the money to buy the ticket, but you're not going to, right? So it was really the uh, the purview of the wealthy uh, who, you know, didn't really care how much the ticket cost. And so you could see that an SST might be that way. Uh, something like this could be adapted to a more of a business jet SST where you don't need to carry as many people, uh, but to do a full scale airline, uh, it'd be a tough to, to have it make money. The Concorde was never a money maker. You know, it's more of a prestige item for Air France and British Airways. Uh, but, um, you know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll have to kind of see, I guess. And my last question for you, I mean, obviously NASA, we know, receives billions of dollars from Congress. Is this the type of project uh, that taxpayer money should be going toward? I mean, is there a way to use the information gathered from this and maybe apply it to other projects? Oh, absolutely. I think this is a great way to use tax dollars for research. We're advancing the state of aeronautics, especially supersonic aeronautics. And if we can find a way, lessons learned that can make, you know, reduce the, the sound of airliners, supersonic or transonic, or, you know, close to transonic like we have now, uh, that would be a benefit to the public. So I think it is uh, money well spent. All right, we'll see. I mean, it definitely uh, very cool to look at. Leroy Chow, thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.